everybody crafting journey here that journey chick on instagram welcome to crafting and crime daily hey kitty kitties okay my co-host uh the crafty cat's pearl is on top of my desk oh there and i have stitch over here occupied playing on the ipad <laughs> he has this little uh game that he likes to play and uh that's what he's doing okay pearl has gotten down this is a good thing. Hey, if you're watching for the first time, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button. The like button is so tired for yesterday from Christmas shopping. Um, so today I told him he could take a nap, but I didn't tell him which room to take a nap in. So make sure you hit the like button because um, you know, he's getting pretty sore. And don't forget the notification bell because you don't want to miss a single episode of Crafting and Crime or one of my lives. You never know when I might go do a pop-up live. Yeah. Okay. So what do we got going on today? Oh my goodness. Lots of stuff. <laughs> got to go to work. Like physically go into the office. <sighs> I know. Not my favorite thing. Hey, um, by popular request, uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to add my um elfster wish list down into the description some of you have asked if i have a wish list and i'll put that down in the description um yeah so here is the painting i worked on it a little bit last night this is for my granddaughter uh let's see for christmas all right I'm trying to get it to show you where I'm kind of where I'm at here. There we go. Look at the hands and the heart. So the hands are just regular acrylic drills. Then they're surrounded by crystals. And then the heart is Aurora Borealis. So I worked on uh, the green row here last night. Um, I didn't do this side. So yeah, sit and watch. And Tia's Crazy Craft Addiction last night. Oh my goodness, someone gifted her a beautiful floss cabinet, a cabinet to store all her floss in. Oh my God. And I sent her a birthday gift. She still hasn't gotten it. Oh, and that reminds me. I also have a birthday coming up. December 29th. Yes, December birthdays. They're the worst. All right, let's get a tray so we can diamond paint. I think we're going to get out a blue color here. Let's see. Number seven. Where is number seven? It's got to be this one. Yep. All right. I don't like days when I have to go to work. Gotta go to work, 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 work. Gotta go to work. All right, let's get the journal out. Planner. Let's get a pen. Today is National Christmas Card Day. December 9th, National Christmas Card Day. Christmas card. And in this day in history, we're going to talk about A police officer, a police officer that was found dead uh, on the streets, and the guy that was injured laying next to him gets tried for his murder. Super interesting case. All right, that is the trial. Uh, the victim was Daniel Faulkner. Daniel F A U L Faulkner. Because this is a crafting and crime show. Yes, it is. So I yesterday I I unboxed waiting for the master. So I put the sticker in here. This is just shows the date that I got it in the mail. This was uh, my Black Friday order. Now I haven't done the editing. Um, so I have two unboxings to edit and get uploaded in my spare time. Yes. So the other thing that I did yesterday was I put a get to know me video into the Facebook group, the Ticket to Ride Destination Paris 
Facebook group. That's our event that starts January 1st. It runs through February 20th. All you have to do to join is go to the Facebook group, answer a couple of questions, fill out the passport application so you have a passport to your destination. And uh, we're going to have fun. Have some fun. It's going to be games that you have to figure out, puzzles to earn tickets towards prizes. Oh, the prizes are going to be amazing. Yeah, so check that out. So I just put a get, get to know me. video on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, that's what's going on. Let's get our gnome. Oh, he, sometimes <laughs> Stitch uh, accidentally swipes the iPad and it gets rid of his game. So I have to get it back. We have to get the game back, buddy. What did you do to the game? Oh, you're on a high level. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> that is levels. So, all right, here we go. How many days? 16 days till Christmas. This is our Advent gnome. Hey, everybody. Okay, let's find out what random act of kindness we should probably do sometime during the season here. Okay, let's see what it is. <sighs> do, do, do. Did you give somebody a hug yesterday? Yeah, okay. Send Christmas cards to your friends. <laughs> I did not plan that. It just, that was totally random that that came out on National Christmas Card Day. How funny is that? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I better do it. <laughs> uh, that's funny, oh my gosh. Okay, get, it's National Christmas Card Day, guys. Wow, <laughs> too funny. This is a day that serves as a reminder to go get your stamps, get your envelopes, pick out your cards. It, you know, usually I buy mine the year before when they're on sale. <laughs> and then, you know, yes, this is an electronic age where you can send something electronically, but it is still really nice to get something in the mail. I just love getting things in the mail. You know, little thank you notes, different things. Um, it just means the person took a little bit of extra time. Now, when the Christmas card was first invented back in 1843, it's credited to uh, Sir Henry Cole. So back in this day, they had what they called the penny post. And it was, the etiquette was, you had to respond in writing to everything that you got. He spent most of his time responding to all of these letters that he would get. So he invented the, the Christmas card. It was a quick way to say, you know, hey, this is me. Uh, thank you. And then you have to spend all that time writing letters. Yeah. So the Christmas card didn't come to the U.S. until 1850 when another gentleman came to the U.S. And, in, and brought the Christmas card. He started printing Christmas cards. A lot of people have a question like, when was the first Christmas stamp? Um, when did that first come out? The first Christmas stamp came out in 1962 and it cost four cents. Today, it's going to cost you 58 cents to mail a Christmas card. That's expensive compared to four cents. Oh my gosh. Do you guys send Christmas cards? A lot of people don't. Um, but uh, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But today's the day to, I would suggest getting it in the mail as soon as possible because shipping has been crazy. I don't know about the regular mail. Like, Hopefully my landlord got the rent that I mailed last week. Uh, she hasn't put it in the bank, that's for sure. But yeah, do some Christmas card shopping today and, and uh, get your stamps and get them out in the mail, yeah. What are these cats up to? Oh, you can't see them because uh, there's Pearl right there and the stitch is actually behind me. 
let's talk about crafting and crime daily. We have a lot to talk about. So the first case, Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, Miss Maxwell is charged with sex trafficking. And I did tell you I would look that up because I've listened to the testimony and I just, I guess I just didn't have a good idea of what sex trafficking, um, you know, what the jury charge or the law was surrounding sex trafficking. And it really depends on the age of the victim. If the, if the victim is a minor, pretty much all you have to prove is that the person had knowledge that the that the victim was a minor and that she engaged in procuring harboring uh setting up the meetings you know the fact that she would have them in her home she would arrange for their travel uh that she would call them on the phone and ask them to come over all with the knowledge that they were minors that's sex trafficking so I've changed my mind since yesterday. There's been quite a bit of testimony that she was present when this, uh, many times when these things would occur, that sometimes she would participate, that she would call and make arrangements for these people to come over, that she would arrange for their travel, that she would give them gifts to entice them uh, to come have sex with her boyfriend. Now she claims that at this point in time that all of this began, he was no longer her boyfriend. She had, be, they had broken up and she was now an employee running, managing all of his households. But the house manager said, no, this was their home. We, this was, you know, we had knowledge that this was their home. It belonged to her and him. So harboring minors. Yeah. Hmm. So yesterday the testimony was, uh, again, Carolyn, the pseudonym Carolyn, she was on the stand for cross-examination. And um, as a good defense attorney should, he pointed out lots of inconsistencies in her many statements that she's given, you know, over the years. And that's understandable. I, I, Yes, it's something that you have to do. You have to impeach a witness with prior inconsistent statements. But to me, I'm not really bothered by that because... It's hard to say the same thing and use the same words every single time. You know, I might use a different word to describe what happened if you ask me a third or fourth time. It doesn't mean it's inconsistent, but it's something the, the defense lawyers have to do. Now, in the Josh Duggar case, uh, Josh Duggar uh, was on the 19 Kids and Counting show. He was the oldest boy. He's been charged with child molestation, downloading uh, kitty porn, so to speak, and both video and photos, lots of testimony against him. Closing arguments occurred yesterday. Um, each attorney pointed out what their expert had, computer expert had said on the stand um, or not said. And then the case went to the jury. The jury had lunch. All the closing arguments occurred before lunch. The jury had lunch and then began deliberations about 1.30 in the afternoon. Continued through uh, early evening and then they, they broke for the night. Now, at one point they asked the judge, could they uh, listen to the tape? There was a tape of Josh talking about uh, the charges. And so I, I think he allowed that. But then they also asked if they could have a calendar for that year. And uh, because that's not part of the evidence, the judge had to refuse their request for a calendar. Um, interesting. So they uh, went home overnight and they will be back in the courthouse today resuming their deliberations. And I'm going to guess that they're going to come back before lunchtime with a verdict. Um, obviously, the, I, it's not something I can bring you live because it's in federal court and there are no cameras in federal court. So we just have to rely on um, reporters that are in the courtroom or other people that are in the courtroom to let us know what the verdict was or is going to be. Uh, okay, and now the trial of Dante Wright. The victim was Dante Wright, 
the trial is of Kim Porter, the former police officer. So I have some notes, very interesting opening statements about the evi what the evidence is going to show during this case. Oh my word. I got to tell you, I got chills. Like I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Um, so the, the, the prosecutor and I really, I'm like, she looks familiar. Where do I know that girl? And then I remembered this is the same prosecution team that prosecuted Derek Chauvin for the death of George Floyd. So this is the George Floyd prosecution team. So I, it was this woman. And I thought she was way more polished than she did. She had done in the George Floyd trial. So I think, you know, this is her second time on, t on TV, on in front of cameras. So I think she's much more relaxed. So she did a very good opening statement. She starts out by describing, you know, Dante Wright as a, a love. I, I don't even, I don't even didn't catch how old he was, but very young, but already a father. He just had a newborn. Um, he had a very loving family, a bright future, uh, and it all ended when she shot him. So um, he apparently was uh, on his way that day with his girlfriend to get a car wash, but he never made it to the car wash. I love when they add that. He never made it to the car wash. No, he did not. He got pulled over because he had an air freshener in his car. Now, I thought it was a broken taillight, but I, when I looked at the videos, his taillights were working. It was the air freshener um, that he got pulled over for. Now, in the car that pulled him over, the squad car that pulled him over, was Kim Potter. She was a field training officer. She was training a new police officer, police officer named Lucky. His last name was Lucky, Mr. Lucky. Well, guess what, Dante? This is not your lucky day. So the prosecutor describes that he pulls them over. He approaches the vehicle. Now, Kim Potter stays in the squad car. He goes up to the vehicle, asks for Dante's information. He gets all of his information, his um you know his name and birth date and all that stuff that he needs to run him through the computer system so he comes back he did have an expired tag and in COVID times that is not unusual for people to have expired tags because they you know I think I had an expired tag during the COVID because it's just you just didn't go get your tag renewed people weren't going anywhere during the COVID you know when it first that first year so this is not unusual and this happened this happened in April of 2020, 2021, April. It actually happened during the George Floyd case. So he comes, Officer Lucky comes back to the vehicle, gets in the vehicle, they run him through the computer system. Uh, he comes back with a bench warrant for failure to appear on a weapons charge. Um, we also later learned that he had a no contact order. He had a, his, a violent history. Um, yeah. He's not the great, loving, bright future guy that the prosecutor is painting him out to be. Anyway, they run him through, through the computer. They find out he has a bench warrant. So they decide we're going to arrest him. So Officer Potter stays in the car. Officer Lucky approaches the vehicle and says, um, you know, I need you to step out of the vehicle. So at, by this point, Officer Potter has left the squad car and she has, uh, she is backing up Officer Lucky. And another officer has arrived on the scene and this is the Sergeant, Sergeant Johnson. I think his name was Johnson. Yeah, Sergeant Johnson. Yeah. So he arrives on the scene. They tell him what's going on, that they're going to arrest this guy. Now, there is a passenger, his girlfriend, she's in the vehicle. So Officer Johnson, he goes around to the passenger side um, and has her open the door. Meanwhile, 
um, they ask, he steps out of the vehicle. They ask him to turn around. Officer Lucky is attempting to put handcuffs on this guy. They're letting him know that they found that he has a warrant, that he, he's going to be arrested. Um, he struggles, gets back into the vehicle. Now a struggle is ensuing between Officer Lucky and Dante Wright, who's, you know, reaching for the ignition, starting his car, and he's getting ready to drive off. Officer uh, Sergeant Johnson is reaching in through the passenger, like his entire body's in this passenger thing, and he's reaching for the gears shift and the, the keys. Officer Lucky on the driver's side is trying to reach for the keys. Meanwhile, Officer Potter pulls out her gun and points it as his rib cage and says, I want to get this right. Here's what she says. I'll taser you, and, he, and it doesn't have any effect on him. So then she yells, taser, 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 which is the indication for the other officers to back away. So the uh, Sergeant Johnson starts to back out of the vehicle, and this is all happening, happening very, very quickly. Um, Officer Lucky lets go. He's backing away, and she, within five seconds, shoots one shot. Um, now, we later learn that... Um, with a taser, you've, you're trained to fire one shot, and with a gun, you're trained to fire two shots. She fires one shot. Immediately, she realizes what she has done. Um, meanwhile, Dante, the vehicle takes off. He takes off in the vehicle. The vehicle goes over a median to the other side of traffic, hits another car almost head on, uh, injuring the, the Dante Wright's passenger. I don't know if the people in the other vehicle were injured. I expect so. So now there's this whole traffic accident over here. So, but here is what you hear Officer Potter say. Shit, I, I first shot him. I grabbed the wrong effing gun and I shot him. And then she says, oh my God, oh my God. And she drops down to the pavement and she is sobbing. She is inconsolable. It is so difficult to watch this. She is so upset. She says, I'm going to prison. I killed a boy. She, and but meanwhile, the prosecution is making this big deal about how nobody is going over. They're all over around Officer Potter. Now, other officers are responding to the scene, to the accident, but none of these officers go over to render assistance to this guy that was just shot, to Dante Wright, who was just shot. Um, yeah, they don't, they don't go over there to offer assistance, um, which, and when the other officers arrive on the scene, they don't know that the driver that was involved in this accident was shot. So they're like dragging him out of the vehicle, you know, tossing him to the ground. Uh, I, I don't know. We are going to see the body cam footage of all of that as well. Meanwhile, there's some, there was some stuff going on inside this car with the girlfriend. And I don't know if it's going to come into evidence or not, but apparently there were drugs in the car. And he tell, Dante tells his girlfriend to hide the drugs. She sticks them uh, in a private place. Um, when she's injured, she's taken to the hospital. And I don't know what ensues there. I don't know if they recovered the drugs. I don't know. But she puts them in her hoo-ha. Yeah. All of this happens really quickly, really quickly. So this is, this is insane. There's so much more to this story than what we thought. But just the watching Kim Potter drop to the pavement and just sobbing, sobbing. You know, clearly this was not intended. And the prosecution was very careful to say this was not intentional. She's not charged with intentional murder. Um, and they go on to describe that she's she was reckless. She she didn't follow procedures. She had you know the tasers on one side, the guns on the other. Um, she she grabbed the wrong. I don't know. There's a, we're going to hear a lot about policies, training, uh, you know, and how this none of it was followed during this 
event and whether or not a taser would have even been the appropriate use of force in this situation. That's going to be a huge issue. Should she have even t been trying to taser him in this situation? I don't know. So then we hear the defense's opening arguments. And um, really, he w I liked this lawyer. He, rather than spending a lot of time going over what the evidence is going to show, he started out by saying, you know what? All this guy had to do was surrender. None of this would have happened. If they had just let him affect the arrest, he would have been taken down. He would have, you know, had a little bond. He would have got it. This would have been a non-issue. But instead, he chose to flee. Uh, he describes that the defense is going to be that Kim Potter was trying to save her fellow officer. As you recall, I told you Sergeant Johnson had a lot of his body in that vehicle trying to stop the driver from going off. And she believed that had he gotten, had he, had they not stopped him with a taser, he was going to drive away with Officer Johnson in the car. So she, the argument is going to be that she was trying to save Officer Johnson's life. Okay. Mm, uh, okay, we'll see. Um, and then he spent, he did describe her, she's a 46-year-old woman, a 26-year veteran of this police force. Um, she has two kids, one in the Marine Corps, one that's a professional hockey player, you know, just an everyday, hardworking police officer who has just been devastated, devastated by the events of that day. Then they spent the rest of his opening statement introducing the different officers, the husband. He pointed out who the husband was in the gallery, who uh, different people were, who the different officers were. Um, you know, these are people that you're going to hear from, you know, just regular people. Uh, so I, I thought that was a clever opening statement without, without drowning the jury in in details that they're going to hear ad nauseum later anyway, he used the time to introduce the people that they're going to hear from. I thought that was clever. So, um, yeah, so that's the uh, opening statements. Now, the mother was the first person to take the witness stand. Dante Wright's mother, who is Caucasian. <laughs> She's white. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, I will... I will give you the 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 lowdown on the rest of the testimony that occurred yesterday and then the testimony that occurred today in tomorrow's episode. Uh, because of Craft With Me Wednesday last night, I didn't have a chance to get to the rest of the testimony. Um, but I will bring that to you tomorrow. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about this day in history. Stitch, what you doing? What happened to your game? It went off? Oh my goodness. Here. Get your game going. What happened to the game, buddy? Apparently he was uh, using Safari. <laughs> All right, here you go. Here you go. Man, he loves that thing. Okay. It is, let's see. So this day in history, on December 9th, 1981, a Philadelphia police officer, Daniel Faulkner, is found dead in the streets of Philadelphia and lying next to him, severely injured, is this um, freelance journalist named Abu Jamal. That's his last name, Abu Jamal. Well, they rush Abu Jamal to the hospital, save his life, and six months later, try him for the murder of the police officer. Now, I don't, what, I don't know what the testimony was, but apparently it was sufficient enough that the jury decided he, was, he should have the death penalty. Well, everyone thought this was really, this was a rush to justice. The man was so weak following his injuries. It was only six months after his injuries. He was so weak that he couldn't even take the stand in his own defense. Um, yeah pretty sad. He was driving, uh, he had been fired from a public radio uh, 
the job that he had. He was driving a cab at the time. He saw the police officer engaged with his brother, so he stops um, and, uh, you know, something happens and I don't know where what happened with the brother, but anyway, he gets charged with the murder, gets the death penalty, which later on down the line uh, was dropped and he's now serving a life sentence and he's asking for a retrial. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I forgot to tell you, in the case that I covered a while, not long ago, the trial of Mark Keith Lloyd, I, it wasn't, it was probably just about a month ago that I was doing this Mark Keith Lloyd trial. Um, this is, as you may recall, was the black man that was uh, wanted he was on the lam. He was wanted for the death of his girlfriend and who was pregnant at the time he shot her. Um, of course, the baby didn't survive either. So he was charged with those two deaths and the attempted murder of the girlfriend's brother. So he had been hiding out in the woods for a couple of weeks. This particular day, he goes to a Walmart. Um, they He's identified in the Walmart as this person that's wanted for these murders. Um, the person that sees him goes out. There's a police officer in the parking lot who had just gone in to get a few things. Um, she goes up and she says, hey, this guy is wanted for murder. He's inside. Anyway, he comes out. A gun battle ensues. Um, Marquise Lloyd shoots and kills Deborah Clayton, Officer Deborah Clayton, and she passes away from her injuries. So the death, he was found guilty of her murder. And... The jury was brought back to hear the death penalty phase. Um, they heard all of the evidence in support of aggravating factors and in support of mitigating factors. And they deliberated and they came back yesterday and they said that the aggravating factors, which included several prior felonies, um, including the murder of the pregnant girlfriend, uh, and the attempted murder of the brother, and he had served 16 years in jail for drug charges, uh, selling drugs. So pr all these prior felonies were the aggravating factors, um, including one felony where he just beat the heck out of this police officer that was trying to question him in the street. Like, just stop and ask him some questions. He just beat him up. So... They said the aggravating factors outweighed the mitigating factors, and they recommended the death penalty. So Marquise Lloyd starts mouthing off to all the people that are in the galleries to the point where the judge had to remove him <laughs> from the courtroom. Now he didn't; he wasn't microphoned, so I could not understand what he was saying. But he was clearly pissed off. Um, you know, he's like, "I wanted to turn myself in, and I tried, and they wouldn't let." You know, he's just. He's, he's delusional. He keeps going on with these thoughts, you know, that he was trying to turn himself in, which we've heard ad nauseum through the trial. Um, so they take him away and the judge says that they're going to have a hearing uh, on, because this is just a recommendation. The death penalty is a recommendation. Now the judge will at, do an actual sentencing at a later point. So she was trying to coordinate the, the dates for the sentencing. Um, and it became uh, clear from some, I guess, some of the things he was saying that he was going to waive this uh, hearing and accept the death penalty. I don't know. We'll see if this ever happens, but they recommended the death penalty. Um, I don't believe in the death penalty, but what this guy was pretty, did was pretty egregious. Yeah, pretty egregious. I mean, shot and killed his pregnant girlfriend attempted to kill her brother, and then killed the police officer. <sighs> pretty bad. Pretty bad stuff. All right. That is the show for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to hit the like button who's resting after his busy day of Christmas shopping yesterday. Um, only I'm not sure which bed he has settled into. Yeah, please don't forget the notification bell. Subscribe if you made it all the way through the show. Thank you for watching. And to my dear subscribers, I love you all. Thank you for watching as well. I hope you're enjoying the new setup where you can see the Christmas tree, the fireplace. Yeah, all the, all the stuff in the background. All right, take care, guys. I will see you tomorrow, Friday, for the Friday episode of Crafting and Crime Daily. Take care, everybody.